So I wrote my mom a letter. I don't actually remember what it said anymore, but it probably went something like this. Dear mom, it's amazing the coincidences that we run into sometimes. The people that pop into our lives unannounced. I probably told her how my classes were going and apologized for not calling enough. I told her that I was fine and that everything was okay because moms worry about things like that. I told her, I probably would have told her how amazing I thought it was that this letter actually got to her. I probably would have told her about the man who was delivering the letter. See, I met this man while I was volunteering at the Cancer Center, a place where I volunteered for the last couple of years. He was an old man, um, but with a twinkle in his eye that looked like he hadn't quite figured out how old he was supposed to be yet. <laughs> his brother was kind of an older, gruff brother who reminded me so much of my older sister himself. Um, but with wrinkles around his eyes that meant that he knew how to laugh also and probably laughed a lot with his brother. I ended up talking with them for about an hour and couldn't tell you a word that we talked about during that time. But I learned that an hour is long enough to feel like you've known someone for a while. And an hour doesn't always feel as long as it actually is. We never talked about his diagnosis, but we didn't really have to. So he was sitting outside the brain tumor clinic. We did talk a little bit about the procedure. He said he was here to see a specialist, and so he wasn't going to have to go down to the OR, and he was very thankful for that, because he'd been into the OR a lot over the last couple of years. It's going to be a simple thing, something they could do up here in the clinic, and that that was going to be it, and he was going to be able to go home. After that hour had passed, we had kind of the opportunity to talk over longer and longer, but I realized I needed to go on and see a couple more of the patients. I got up, um, and that's when he finally came up with it. He said, I'm here to see a specialist, but my primary care physician is actually down in Florida. And that's how this whole letter thing came up. It turned out that the doctor worked at the same hospital that my mom worked at. And he said, wouldn't it be funny if you wrote a letter, and I'll put it in my medical folder, and then the next time that I go down there, I'll take that letter out, and I'll go by the ER that I've passed so many times, and I'll give your mom that letter. It'll be a great chance, and we can surprise her. We, he had said. Somewhere in the last hour, things had gone from him patient and me student to we. So I got up and I walked around, I cleaned up some things, and I finally sat down to write the letter. Dear mom, it said, it's amazing the people that pop into our lives unannounced. After a few more minutes, I walked back over to him and I handed him the letter, and he slipped it into his medical folder with a smirk and said, this will be perfect. I'll give it to her the next time I'm down there. It should be just the next week or so. A few more minutes and his buzzer went off, and it was time for him and his brother to walk into the clinic. I meandered around for a little bit longer, and I finally ended up over by the coffee machine. And it's at that point that I heard a sound that I had never heard before in the cancer center. It sounded like a shopping cart was being pushed down a grocery aisle with the wheels flying madly in any given direction. I looked around the corner and there were four paramedics of the gurney barreling out of the elevator running straight down the hall towards the clinic. And as the qu clinic doors swung wildly back and forth, I saw nurses running back and forth, I saw doctor's coats swinging wildly, I saw caps and I saw gloves flying, and I saw the paramedics turn the corner. And several minutes of activity, crazy activity, with machines beeping and people yelling, was followed by several minutes of activity as the activity died down. Caps and gloves were picked up off the floors, the doctors wandered back to their station, the nurses calmed back down, and the hum of the hospital returned. A hum that had gone so unnoticed just a few moments before was now deafening in its silence. And that silence was punctuated by only a single sound as the man's brother walks out of the clinic and slumps into a chair in the waiting room with his head in his hand, tears streaming down his face, and crinkles around his eyes that I hadn't seen her before. A doctor walks out and comes and sits next to him. As a gurney is rolled out of the clinic, the door is still swinging slightly. All I wanted to hear was the sound of the shopping cart wheels. But the weight on the gurney made sure that that didn't happen. At the end of the day, I don't know what happened that afternoon. There was a man and his brother that I met in the hospital. I gave him a letter and they walked into a clinic. 
A gurney followed them, and his brother left crying. That's all I know. Maybe the doctors were running to catch the end of the game. Maybe the nurses were running to celebrate a friend's engagement. Maybe the paramedics were running because they were late for lunch. Maybe the doctor, or maybe the brother was crying because his team had lost the championship. Maybe the chaos was all for someone else. In the end, it doesn't matter. In medicine, we don't always have the chance to see the end. Patients walk in and they walk out whether it's over days, or months, or hours, or weeks, or minutes. The cost of caring can sometimes be so high, the tears, and the laughs, and the smiles, to learn to live with the unknown, the unknowable, the never to be found out, is part of learning to care. I think and smile about a man and a twinkle in his eye and an older brother who reminded me so much of my own sister. I think and laugh about a conspiratorial letter and the folder that it went into. Again, the cost of caring can be so high, but it's a cost that I paid for that afternoon. There are a million ways that that afternoon could have gone that are different than the way that I thought it through in my head so many times since then. A million maybes and another million goodbyes. But my mom never got the letter. <laughs>